Welcome. Let's understand calculation of cable sheath induce voltage. Before we start calculation, let's first see the terms sheath and shield will be used interchangeably since they have the same function, problems, and solutions. Sheath refers to a water impervious, tubular metallic component of a cable that is applied over the insulation. Examples are a lead sheath and a corrugated copper or aluminum sheath. A semiconducting layer may be used under the metal to form a very smooth interface. Shield refers to the conducting component of a cable that must be grounded to confine the dielectric field to the inside of the cable. Shields are generally composed of a metallic portion and a conducting or semiconducting extruded layer. The metallic portion can be either tape, wires, or a tube. Wahen metallic cable sheaths, or armor of three-phase single-core cables, are unbonded or bonded at only one end, a voltage is induced at the unbonded ends. Should both ends be bonded, a circulating current flows in the sheath or armor as a result of the induced voltage. We first will consider a single, shielded cable. If the shield is only grounded one time, and a circuit is not completed, the magnetic flux produces a voltage in the shield. The amount of voltage is proportional to the current in the conductor and increases as the distance from the ground increases. See figure. If the shield is grounded two or more times, or otherwise completes a circuit, the magnetic flux produces a current flow in the shield. The amount of current in the shield is inversely proportional to the resistance of the shield. Another way of saying this is the current in the shield increases, as the amount of metal in the shield increases. The voltage stays at zero. See figure. The shield, or sheath, of a cable must have sufficient conductivity, in metal to carry the available fault current, that may be imposed on the cable. Single conductor cables should have enough metal, in its shield to clear a phase to ground fault, and with the type of reclosing scheme that will be used. It is not wise to depend on the shield of the other two phases, since they may be some inches away. You need to determine. What is the fault current that will flow along the shield? What is the time involved for the backup device to operate? Will the circuit be reclosed and how many times? Too much metal in the shield of a cable section with two or more grounds is not a good idea. It costs additional money to buy such a cable, and the losses not only reduce the ampacity of the cable, but cause undue economic losses from the heat produced. Now we will calculate sheath induced voltage for single core 630 square mm earthed cable of 127 by 220 kV cable. As we can see here induced voltages depends on current in the conductor and reactance of sheath or screen. Where W is dependent on system frequency. S is the distance between conductor. DS is the effective mean diameter of metallic sheath. As explained in previous slide, calculated induced voltage in sheath based on considered input is 0.0483 volts per ampere per kilometer. So induced voltage for the rated current of 800 ampere would be 38.65 volts per kilometer. And at short circuit current, induced voltage shall be 1.9 kV per kilometer. This will help to decide cable sheath voltage limiting requirements and size of conductor. Country-wise current practice for shield or sheath standing voltages. Maximum sheath voltage valued is ranging from 25 volt to 250 volt. These sheath value mentioned at normal operating conditions. Values of sheath voltages during emergency operating conditions varies country to country, and it is in the range of 275 volt to 600 volt.
Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.